what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss on a controversial topic which is actually not a controversy but it has been made into a controversy and hyped beyond <laughs> the limits okay and there are so many misconceptions pertaining to this topic in the minds of indians hindus muslims christians jews zoroastrians buddhists and the people from the west in general and what's the topic the topic is the difference between varnashrama and the caste system which is still prevalent in some places of india and was prevalent from many centuries and today we shall discuss what actually was varnashram system and why is it very good and what are the problems of the caste system and what's the difference between the two and how the west and the literatures and the people the authors of the west have blown this out of proportion all right and when i speak of authors i am not going to take name of any books or any particular people here but i will give a overview in general there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and please check the other videos on bhagavad gita which i have uploaded by that you will understand why am i talking of the varnashram here and yes before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and before i speak anything on the gita i offer my prayers and obeisances to my preceptors who have bestowed the divine knowledge unto me by saying this prayer do you remember <laughs> if you don't no problem you will very soon remember it om agyanti mirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha this is a very short prayer actually if i speak the long prayer it will consume 5 minutes <laughs> and by that time most of you who are watching this video you will be like oh no 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 we are not interested in watching this video all right so what is the meaning of the word varnashrama why i am talking of varnashrama here is because we have finished the first chapter of the bhagavad gita and there arjuna says to lord krishna that if we kill these people from our family then the varnashram system will be destroyed now why at all arjuna is concerned about the varnashram system yes that is what we need to understand because if we just bypass the varnashram system it will not do justice to the first chapter because that is the highlight that is the hallmark that is the as in hindi you say kendra bindu of the first chapter because from there arjuna is telling the women will get degraded because they will be exploited by unscrupulous men who are not having any spiritual inquisitiveness and by that unwanted progeny will be born who are only interested in indulging in sense enjoyment like illicit sex wine smoking watching tv watching movies yes so that's the problem and then when these population the percentage of these people rise then what arjuna says that the ancestors will be deprived of their share and nobody will be offering homages unto them because of which they will also degrade they means the ancestors and then there will be complete chaos in the society yes that is what arjuna says so the starting point of arjuna's justification for why not to fight the war is the destruction of the varnashram system so it is very important to understand what varnashram is basically first let me talk of varana varana and ashram these two make up varnashram so what is varna varna refers to that part of an individual which takes care of his or her material life and ashram refers to that part which takes care of his or her spiritual life so before talking of the varna i would talk of the ashram let's talk of spirituality first okay so what is the meaning of the word ashram the meaning of the word ashram is to take ashray ashray means to take shelter the word ashray means shelter so ashram is one place where you go and take shelter shelter in whom in god 
it's not um, it is not a shelter in tv or movies or film stars or cricket stars or football stars or baseball stars or investment bankers or corporates or politicians no it is not a refuge in these people it is a refuge refuge which we are ideally supposed to take in the supreme who is god himself now what are the four orders of the ashram the varna and the ashram both have four orders the ashram is referring to as i said taking shelter in god now how do you take shelter by either of the four ways first is a brahmachari that is the brahmachari ashram brahmachari ashram means a person a man or a woman follows celibacy till they get married because celibacy is very important if we want to have strong will power because even ayurveda says that 64 drops of blood combine to form one drop of semen and semen when retained in the body then as per ayurveda and as per different other sources give tremendous strength tremendous will power tremendous determination tremendous faith tremendous hope all the divine virtues all the 26 beautiful qualities about which lord krishna will mention in the coming verses of the gita will be very beautifully found in a person who preserves or controls his or her semen and then it's true both for men and for women also so the vedic culture does not entertain the union of a man and a woman before marriage because then what happens is in our experience we see that in the world around us these days there are so much free mixing going on yes among the men and the women and so many marriages are breaking apart so many things are falling apart now when i do astrological consultations people always come and tell me that not always but many people tell me oh my wife is still in love with her ex boyfriend and i'm also in love with my ex girlfriend i don't know how will i sustain this marriage no? both of us are attached to somebody well then why did you get married see the, these issues come up when we are not having proper ground in our spiritual practices the word brahmachari means one who does achar in brahman achar is practice thinking contemplation focus and brahman is referring to the supreme brahma that is god this is not the brahmins here this brahma is different and this is also not referring to lord brahma the creator okay this is referring to spirit which is what we are made of and who is the ultimate spirit that is god that is why god is known as parmatma and the scriptures also describe that lord vishnu resides in the heart as the four-handed parmatma form so a brahmachari he or she because even if you are a woman you are not married then you are ideally supposed to be a brahmacharini and that is what we have in the nine forms of goddess durga uh, brahmacharini that form is there that means uh they are the women who are following celibacy till they get married they are known as kumaris and the presence of kumaris is extremely auspicious during any religious ceremony that is why in india whenever you will go to any religious ceremony primarily if it is a very if it is in a very spiritual place like somewhere in south india or shirangam or e even in many other places in north india i have seen the unmarried girls the virgin girls will be there to invite the lord they will be sprinkling water in the ground they will be sprinkling sprinkling uh, rose petals and that is how auspiciousness comes into your home that is said and the same is for men we are supposed to be a celibate ideally but in kali yuga that is not to be seen anymore because of that there's so much nonsense which is going on people are not able to stay committed to one person because they have been into so many relationships before marriage that things are falling apart now when i say this somebody may say that oh we don't like the way you are speaking but 
unfortunately i also don't like to speak like that but that's the fact of the matter you see and this is happening everywhere with everybody this is happening because the people were not trained to follow celibacy see following celibacy is nothing great there is nothing great about preserving your semen it is only great if you are preserving it and using it for your spiritual progress otherwise preserving semen is not a very great activity although it is great because you are not wasting the vital fluid which can give life but it is still not something very great also i mean it is very great if you utilize that power which you have inside you for spiritual progress until 25 the brahmachari ashram is in account for everybody for both men and for both women sometimes people in india they say oh women should be very pure na women should be like this women should be like that and for men there are no rules no restrictions that's complete sheer brutal nonsense if somebody is telling that to you just show them this video okay <laughs> that's complete nonsense if anybody tells women that oh you should be like this you should be like that and i can do whatever i want nobody has put any restriction on men well if i start quoting the shlokas for men you will have no place to hide your face okay so there are no particular shlokas which are quoted for men that men should be pure because it is already expected of them to be pure okay so if somebody if you are a man and you are watching this video and you think that you have a free license to do whatever you want well then wait for karma to come and on the other hand if you are going on blaming women okay oh she is like that she is like this you are inviting terrible karma to yourself okay so now the brahmachari ashram is there for everybody irrespective of your gender you are a man or a woman you are supposed to follow celibacy till you get married and what do you do in those 25 years you build your strong spiritual foundation on which your entire life is grounded that is why you will see these people nowadays so many people i know many of my friends either they are men or they are women most of my friends they are completely headless headless means they may be working in big big jobs they may have uh big big partners with whom they are into relationships but they are completely headless they don't know where their life is heading today you ask them what will do they'll say oh i'll open a restaurant oh tomorrow maybe i'll become an investment banker oh no 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 we should do masters in abroad right in country like germany <laughs> so you see the things are changing they are very much fickle minded today they are with this person suddenly they don't like this person suddenly another person comes into the forefront and then suddenly they don't like that person also and then they are into another relationship and then they find out oh that uh, the uh, earlier person was already cheating on them and their minds are so much in distress that is the story of every materialist in this world that is because the people were are not trained to follow celibacy yes what to speak of the young generation even the generation which uh, was there in our father and our mother's times even they were not taught all this maybe our grandfathers and our grandmothers would have been in that state that is why we see that their lives were much much happier fulfilled content even if they didn't have much money so that was the reason and then after having strong foundation we enter grihastha ashram the word grihastha means griha astha means one griha means home and stha means one who stays in the home so grihastha means one is married that means the person stays in the home he continues his occupation with children and his wife and then you lead a god conscious life what does it mean to lead a god conscious life while many people think especially in countries like india or not in india even in many other countries of the west but especially in countries like india if you go and tell them oh why don't you do this spiritual practice now if you tell a householder then what they will tell they will say you two things the first thing they will tell you is we don't have time all right that's a big fat lie which they tell to themselves the second thing they will tell you is oh these are for sadhus these are not for us 
okay so in india there's a big misconception among the householders that no 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 spirituality religion all this is not for us it is only for those people who are sitting in the forests but the problem is there are no forests that means if you go to the scriptures if you take a notice of the grihasthas and those who are renunciates you will be surprised to know there are very few renunciates there are very few people who are unmarried most of them majority of them even the rishis the sages they are also married otherwise how are they getting birth <laughs> those people who don't know the scriptures for them the moment you say rishi they will think okay rishi means one who is meditating in the forest he has nothing to do with material life no that's that is one of the view points of a rishi but that is not the ultimate view point the important factor that decides if you are a rishi or not is not which ashram you are in either you are a brahmachari or you are a, san, a sanyasi we'll discuss about sanyas later or you are a grihastha it is not important important is what are you doing by staying in that ashram now as i said the two uh the two big fat lies they will tell is the first if you ask anybody who is married anywhere oh why don't you uh, attend this satsang why don't you attend this religious function why don't you attend the spiritual retreat which is going on then they'll say oh we don't have time i'm sorry to say but we never have time but we make time right so if uh, if you are a man and if your wife tells you oh can you please give this to me then even if you don't have time you will do it right because you love your wife <laughs> i mean i am considering you love your wife okay taking that into consideration i am saying then if your child asks you something papa papa i want this na then will you not give the child even if you don't have time you will give it give him or her right why because you love the child so there you see we always make time for those things we value should i repeat we always make time for those things which we value pause should i start <laughs> we always make things for those which we value and that can include anything from people to organizations to communities to our individual health it can be anything so understand this if you are a householder and you are watching this and if you feel that you don't have time sit down and make notice of the things that you are giving time to because everybody has 24 hours how come you don't have time now i am not saying that you will have time like a renunciate because they don't have families but at least you are never so busy that you cannot even chant uh, one mantra in the morning one mala right that is not possible when that happens when you are simply wasting time watching tv yes what's there in the tv in most of the indian households i see whenever i go to my home i will see they will see these saas bahu serials saas is the mother in law and bahu is the daughter in law and the same thing is going on the same old garbage is there from last 20 25 years from the time i was a child the same garbage is going on the mother in law is planning how to bring my son back from this wicked daughter in law and the wife is always planning how to throw the mother in law out from the house and how to completely capture the husband and put him in her pockets right that's the same nonsense which is going on in the saas bahu serials <coughs> now yes somebody will write in the comments no no there is one serial which is not like this i am not talking of those serials but i am talking of the majority <coughs> yes what is another thing they will highlight in the saas in the serials affairs right sexuality intimate scenes all those things kissing scenes so all these things they will be showing and the women of the family and the men and the children as soon as they will sit down to have dinner well in kaliyuga they will have dinner together that is also a big question mark but considering in some families in india still they will have dinner together 
then they will be seeing these serials and what what are they seeing i i whenever i go home myself i i see myself okay there's this serial going on what they are showing okay now there is some fight going on in the mother in law and the daughter in law i mean how in the universe is that conducive for your family life seeing fights that is not conducive yes so if you are wasting time then other things are there like news now somebody will say oh are you saying don't watch news i'm not telling that you can watch news there's no problem with news it's great to know what's going on in the world what's going on in the universe there's nothing wrong with that but if we are taking news as a means to have that to fill that void which is there inside us yes endless useless debates in india i have seen there are channels where they will have debates on certain things and then what they will do they will invite a person who has done bachelors from somewhere in delhi and then they have done masters from somewhere in uk and then phd have to be from either us or australia all right other countries are not allowed and then they will come and they will start debating and they will use phrases like okay i don't agree with you but let but let's agree to disagree these are phases they will use and they are debating on the same old nonsense like if i go to my home i see uh, they will be seeing this one channel i'll not take name so what this channel will do every uh, every other day they will bring guests from indian army and then they will bring the same guests from the pakistan army and they will debate okay if india uh, if pakistan attacks india who is going to win and if india attacks pakistan who is going to win for god sake nobody is going to win both are going to be destroyed because both are nuclear powers yes so if somebody thinks that if india attacks pakistan and then india will be in a very good shape well maybe you don't know about the strength of pakistan and of course if pakistan attacks india pakistan will be wiped out of the face of earth right we all know that because the size is very small but either ways whoever attacks it will lead to total destruction everybody knows and that is why none of the countries are attacking <laughs> they could have thrown uh, nuclear bombs 20 years back 30 years back when india tested in pokhran but they know they are not doing it some skirmishes in the border is an exceptional case but when i am saying a war i am meaning full fledged nuclear war that is never going to happen and if it happens both the countries will be destroyed okay now somebody will write in the comments oh are you telling india is weaker than pakistan i am not saying that but at the end of the day both are nuclear powers if there is a fight it will be catastrophe so don't worry the governments are intelligent enough so they will not do such blunders neither india has the courage neither pakistan has the courage oh now some bjp follower will say maybe oh are you saying narendra modi is a coward no i am not saying anything <laughs> it has nothing to do with bjp or congress or narendra modi it, it has nothing to it has to do with some sane human intelligence and i know the indian prime minister narendra modi he is a sane person so he will never do such blunders okay let's attack pakistan india is going high in the economical race india's economy is improving why should we waste time fighting with countries like pakistan and even pakistan has so many problems why in the universe will pakistan waste time fighting with countries like india what will pakistan get by fighting with india nothing both are going to lose simply all right so if these are the things which we are seeing in the evening when we come from home then we will definitely not have time to watch some lectures given by some saints some sages all right so we never have time we always make time so grihasthas have to understand this and every weekend we should visit the holy place holy place doesn't mean you go to a holy dham holy place can be anywhere it can be within your city it can be in your next door holy place is a place where holy people have gathered that is the definition of a holy place holy place is not mathura holy place is not vindavan holy place is not shirangam they are also holy places but holy place is one where god is present through his followers through his devotees and where we go and listen about him 
and by that we gain enlightenment and we also give that knowledge to others that is the definition of a holy place so grihasthas have to understand that they will never have time they will always have to make time okay and then we have the third order which is vanaprastha vanaprastha means that happens generally after 50s or 55 or 60s you can say the husband and wife they will stay together but not in the home they will leave the home and they will go and spread the message of god vana means forest now that means a couple who is staying in the forest which doesn't mean that you go and stay in the forest but it means that you go and spread spiritual wisdom in the forests which means outside your home that means wherever you go you become a beacon of enlightenment but the prerequisite is for that you have to first of all till the age of 50 lead a god centered life otherwise you cannot become one of prastas then what happens you become simply a matter of joke in the society have you seen how they make a fun of the old people i have seen in places my god some uh, some people i know their daughter in law will come and beat them also sometimes that's horrible that's horrendous that is why after you have crossed a certain limit you are not supposed to stay in home because if you stay in home you will simply get insults that is what the scriptures are telling don't stay in the home go out of the home spread spirituality then what happens you become like that godly figure in the family otherwise what happens you simply become a person who is of not a, any good use anymore and then what happens your children also don't respect you many people call me and tell me that oh my children are not respecting me now i have become very old then i am like you are old physically that's true but the problem is not that you are old physically the problem is you are lacking any spiritual power that is why they are not respecting you now this is not a license to the children whose parents are not spiritually elevated that you throw them out of your home no i am not saying that what i am saying that is if you want that in your old age your children respect you they take care of you please <laughs> take care of yourself when till the time you reach that age by developing spiritual wisdom because then you will be a source of guide inspiration knowledge enlightenment for the family then nobody will be wanting to leave you everybody will be like oh no 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 i want to stay with this person please 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 tell me the stories of rama and tell me the stories of mahabharat if you are born in a christian family then so many stories are there my god so many saints in the christian tradition my god so many the same is with islam this is irrespective of religion then you become the most sorted person you will always be in demand so old age as they say old is gold that is only true if you are spiritually elevated otherwise nobody respects you in your old age that's the sad part of life and that will happen with everybody that will happen with me that will happen with anybody who is watching this video because everybody is going to become old right one day so we have to take care that as we age as we become more mature our spiritual life also has to grow with that otherwise nobody is going to value us and this is kali yuga for god sake and this is not fear mongering just go and see the condition the plight of the old people the elders they have been thrown ditched by their children into old age homes the children say oh we have nothing to gain from them why should we keep them with us right because kali yuga is at its peak now although it has just started only 5000 years have gone and kali yuga's total duration as per the shrimad bhagavatam is 432000 years so 427900 something years are remaining so wait and watch as it progresses there will be complete mayhem in kali yuga because that's what kali yuga is all about right it's selfishness quarrel and hypocrisy that's what is kali yuga so if you want that you stay properly in kali yuga then parikshit maharaj is been told by sukhdev goswami kaler dosh nidhe rajan 
अस्ति ही एकान महद गुणान कीर्तना देव कृष्ण से मुक्ता संग परम व्रजेत व्हिच मींस दैट कालियुगा इज एन ओशन ऑफ फॉल्स ओ माय डियर राजन ओ किंग परीक्षित अस्ति ही एकान महद गुणा बट देयर इज वन ग्रेट क्वालिटी कीर्तना देव कृष्ण से मींस वन हु टेक्स द होली नेम ऑफ गॉड मुक्ता संग परम व्रजेत ही विल बी डिलीवर्ड ऑफ ऑल सफरिंग एंड ऑल सिंस so that means whichever religion we are following whichever tradition we are following we must always ensure that as we keep aging our spiritual life also improves because when that happens we will be able to give enlightenment to others then why will somebody throw you out of your home nobody will do that if you are just sitting like a typical old person in india who is just sitting in the home and he is just criticizing oh he did like this she did like that then they will throw you out i am telling that's very sad so many people i know in their old age they run into depression why because they feel neglected why because nobody wants to stay with them because they don't have anything valuable to share that is why nobody wants to stay with you but if you are very spiritually elevated i give the example of dalai lama my god look at his age but do you think he will suffer like in the old age no he will never suffer everybody is dying to meet him yes so become like him we cannot be like him but at least we can try to elevate our consciousness so that we also do not become burden to anybody because if we become old and if we cannot offer spiritual strength spiritual guidance then that's a very sad part of life that we are actually technically a burden because we are not able to give anything to them that's the sad part of life that will happen to me that will happen to everybody unfortunately so we have to ensure that we become sources of inspiration and that happens when the couple is in the vanaprastha order that means you don't stay in your home i mean you sometimes visit your home but you are going on spreading spiritual knowledge today you go here then tomorrow you go there you stay there you go to different holy places and you dedicate your life completely to god and then is the fourth the ashram the fourth the last end of it all that is sanyas sanyas means san nyasa nyasa is to let go renun- renounce and san is sansa there are many meanings of the word sanyas it simply means that when you are so elevated spiritually after the vanaprastha order you don't stay in your home anymore you let your wife stay with your children and then you accept the order of saffron saffron color as they say bhagwa maybe this this is also looking like saffron <laughs> so when you accept that and you roam around the entire world preaching spiritual knowledge you have that danda that tridandi swami they say why they why sanyasis have that danda that rod that stick that shows i will beat anybody who tries to take me into illusion <laughs> no no not physically but categorically it simply means that i am not going to listen to the mundane things because i have dedicated myself completely to god and there are different levels of sanyas kutichak bahudak parivara chakacharya and then there is paramhamsa about which we will discuss later but these are the various ashramas which are there in the vedic context and in today's video i could only discuss about the ashram part and in the next video we will discuss about varna all right that is quite of a controversial topic actually there is no controversy but people have made it into a controversy okay so what i want to say about the ashram is ashram is a place either you are a brahmachari or you are a grihastha or you are a vanaprastha or you are a sanyasi it simply doesn't matter because if you read in the scriptures as i gave the example earlier most of the people are householders oh my god what is he telling no i am speaking the truth let's count 
how many renunciates and how many householders now it gets interesting hanuman ji celibate <laughs> renunciate bhishma pitama renunciate sugriv householder jamwan householder these are from ramayan then we have from the mahabharat uh, sorry in ramayan there is vibhishan he is householder ravana is also householder <laughs> then we have from the mahabharat we have bhishma's example then we have yudhishthir maharaj householder arjuna householder to whom lord krishna personally spoke the gita can you imagine lord krishna is himself a householder <laughs> he is not going to the forest and staying then we have the example of bhim householder nakul householder sahadev householder kunti maharani is also householder draupadi the epitome of perfection in spiritual life she has five husbands my god that's like uh, five different ashrama simultaneously she is a householder then who else sukhdev goswami celibate who spoke the bhagavatam parikshit maharaj who heard the shrimad bhagavatam he is householder rishabdev householder maharaj nimi householder maharaj prithu householder so many householders you see and in shrimad bhagavatam we have the example of 12 mahajans out of them majority are householders should i quote the shloka again my god i am always tempted to quote this shloka again and again swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishmo balir vaya sakhi vayam so let's count swambhu swambhu is lord brahma himself lord brahma is a householder narada naradis the he is the manas putra of lord brahma he is a renunciate narad muni narad muni bajaye vina one who goes and sings narayan narayan wherever he goes swambhu narada shambhu lord shiva is another householder we all know about his wife right goddess parvati swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kumaro means they are the four sons of brahma they are renunciates swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo kapil muni is one of the incarnations of vishnu himself he is also a celibate swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu manu is swambhu manu and his wife satarupa they are householders prahlad one of the greatest of all mahajans prahlad maharaj we all know about him he is a householder janak janak is father of sita devi he is also a householder bhishma he is renunciate bali is bali maharaj who gave the three worlds to vaman dev vishnu avatar he is also a householder vaya sakhi is sukhdev goswami he is a renunciate vayam vayam means yamaraj is telling this to the yamadutas that means we that means myself included in that yamaraj is also a householder so there you see out of the uh, 12 seven are householders bharat maharaj householder see so many householders so if you go and tell that oh i am a householder and i don't have time to practice this practice that to these people they will start laughing at you they will say oh my god you're such a fool <laughs> don't make fool of yourself don't cheat yourself all right make time for spiritual pursuits and then you see how your life improves god will come and tell look i am here always i was always here but the only difference is you never look towards me all right it has been a very long video and i will not torture you more <laughs> and i am surprised if you made it this far till the end all right if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a personal consultation from me then please approach me in my website below all right and if you like this video click the thumbs up and in the next video we will discuss about varuna all right there you go until next time wish you good luck with your ashram see you tata